Creating hyper-realistic materials may not be as hard as you think. Most people believe that in order to do this, you need to make a super complex graph that is capable of calculating the distance between you and the location of the moon, and this is far from being true. Creating a complex material with hyper-realism is not about the technical knowledge, it's more about these three main skills, organization, art direction, and persistence. I will show you these three skills that you need to make your material. Now, when I talk about organization, I talk about planning before executing. If you go to work with no plan, you most probably will lose. This is the same. Before starting a material, you usually gather for reference, then you go directly to the designer. That is what you need to avoid. My organization has two stages and it starts from the reference gathering. Without the proper reference, you won't be able to create something good. I have two sources of reference, Pinterest and Splash. Pinterest allows me to look for my material inspiration. What patterns can I create? What colors can I use? What aggregation value can I add to my surfaces? While Unsplash has the best professional photographs allowing me to gather inspiration for color and how I'm going to render my material. For every image I gather, I create a section or group to filter them. Usually I divide them in material pattern, edge detail, surface detail, distraction, color, and render. Now that I have my reference, I can start with stage two of my first skill which is analyze and plan. Many people just place their reference overlaid in designer and that's what it is. That is not the best way of extracting its power. You have the images, now read them. I like drawing over them to make a way more clear view of all the shapes, but the secret here is start to think how will you make this in designer. Subtin designer is a node-based program. That means we will have to create complex node connections to create graphs. These graphs have an order and changing a single detail will affect the end result. Before getting to the software, I always Always think about the order and how to do everything in a way to achieve the best result I can. Let's take this brick wall as an example. First, I will have to create the pattern, then add shape variation to it, following up the edge details going from the big shapes to the small ones. After this, I will add height variation and finally surface details. If the materials have any distraction, I will do this at the end of it, before starting with the base color. Now let's take a look at my graph on my colorful material to check out this organization, but inside Substance Designer. As you can see, this is the graph of my colorful material. Yes, and I have organized this in different places, it started with main shape, going back to my surface detail and so on. This is my graph and as you can see, I have it sectioned in different areas. There's one area that I haven't sectioned yet, but let's take a look at the beginning of it. You can see here how I started with the creation of my shapes and of course, based on the technical knowledge I have on this, I decided to make things in a different order because this technical knowledge sometimes can restrict you from doing what you need. So I started with the tile sampler in order to get these shapes with different values so I can then use my distance to create this cell pattern. And I use a directional warp, two directional warp, sorry, to shape, shift my shapes into something like this and use an edge detect to finally give it the shape. After that, using a non-uniform color and the levels to give them that round looking shape of like water stones, yeah? So here is the organization part of my process where I thought, okay, so I need to do the pattern. Where am I doing the pattern? I'm doing the pattern here. Okay, so now I need to do my edges. Where am I doing my edges? I'm doing in this section here. Okay, now I need to give it the shape and uh, it, it needs to have. So I'm going for this one. Yes, all of these things I thought about them before jumping into the making of the materials. And sometimes after some time, I do get used to it. Yes, yeah, same happens here. For my mortar, yes, I went for a threshold where I get the negative space between the rocks. Yeah, and what I did was first, okay, so first I'm gonna do edges. Yeah, so you can see here how I start molding my edges from small to big. Yes, then we go for some surface detail. Finally going back again into some edges. And after that, I start adding surface detail. See, here the only thing I'm adding is more value to it. But I have an order to things, and that order is because I plan things before actually getting into Substance Designer to make them happen. The second need skill is art direction. Substance Designer is quite technical and it's easy to get lost when mixing notes and achieving a desired result or something close. This is struck as from art part of the material direction. But how can we define art direction? Art direction can be defined as the process of overseeing and guiding the visual aspects of a creative project. Having a super complex no setup might look fun, but it doesn't mean it will 
will follow the visual guide that we need for the material we want to create. Knowing how to apply your technical knowledge in your favor to achieve this visual aspect is super important. So let's take a look to the graph one more, but let's get into some specific details that I have created for you to take. For example, what do I mean with eye direction when you go for material creating? As we have already figured out, eye direction, it will allow us to check on the visual aspects of our material. Now, in Substance Designer, when creating a material, you have different uh, aspects for the art side. When we talk about art direction, we don't only talk about base color, we talk also about the details we have in the normal map. Our normal map is super important for the creation of our base color as we usually take the information from here to make this base color. Yes, it's kind of like more uh, helpful as the, the, the base color is going to follow the shape we created. But the most important part in this is knowing how to use your technical knowledge to take yourself into guide our direction. Something I always see a lot in students is that they always go for really high values when applying things. Let me show you how you do it. So if you look here to my right, you're going to see that I'm using a value of 0 0.025. This is a really low value. Yes, just to add in a small noise to add for my material. This is what I mean when we go to our direction. I mean, having the discipline to say, okay, I need to add this noise, but I need to know how much I need to add of this noise. Yes, and this happens with a lot of other things. You go here, this abstract has 0 0.01. Yeah, and I have this same situation in many other materials when, where maybe a slow blur can have really, 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 really low values going from 0 0.005 even lower. Here you can check again 0 0.035 and 0 0.1 and as I know I'm going for something really strong with something really low what I'm doing I'm masking. Yes I'm using a Gaussian noise just to mask these things. Sometimes you don't need to make super extreme complex masks to get a, their best result you just need to add variation yes and this variation is going to help you achieve better result in your materials. The last skill you will need is persistent and this may be the most important skill you need to learn if you want to become a material artist. Anything you do in designer will be hard to figure out at first, especially if you're a student. Keep your realistic materials in need of a constant work where you want to render this project until it looks really good. Most students start a material and they suddenly call the project finish when it's not looking anything similar to what the reference shows. To this situation, I always hear the same answer. I don't have the skill to achieve the result. Well, what if I tell you that you don't have that skill because you're not willing to push yourself through this point? What if I told you that you can get that skill only if you keep working on the project making every change you can even if it means starting from zero. If you have done 100 times the same thing and the result didn't change as you need a better outcome then change how you are doing things. We get results based on the actions we take and how that actions relate to our environment. Persistence is what takes you from being bad at something to being great at it. There's no secret recipe it's only hard work. Organization and art direction are really important but as I said before persistence is what's gonna push you through. Without persistence, you're not going to be enough time in the organization part and without it, you're also not going to be able to learn what you need in order to art direct your projects in order to make them more closer to reality. If you understood everything I just said and now you feel confident enough to start trying, I can support you with a free resource I've had created a long time ago and it might be really familiar for you because it is placed on Discord. With other professional material artists, we have created a Discord community where we host events with anyone who is learning to make materials. These events are for free and you can join us or ask for free feedback in this server. If you want to become a material artist, you can go to the description of this video where you will find the Discord link invite, click on it, and once you're in, let us know why you want to learn Substance Designer. I hope this chapter was useful for you, and I will see you in our next video.